Hey guys, this is uh, Mr. Shower Stoichiometry and Baking Soda Lab. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking um, sodium bicarbonate, which is NaHCO3, and reacting it with three molar HCl to produce sodium chloride plus CO2 and water. Now, this is a pretty cool lab. It's a stoichiometry lab where you're going to follow along, copy down <clears throat> the information that I obtained from the lab, incorporate it into your lab report. However, you are going to calculate uh, percent yield and theoretical mass on your own. Okay. You're going to use my data. Okay. As the actual mass of the sodium chloride produced. Okay. But let's get started with the lab. All right. Um, the first thing you want to do is obtain an evaporating dish, which I did already. It's clean and dry. And you want to obtain a wash glass. So the first thing you want to do is find the mass of the two of these combined, put them on the balance. Okay. I got 124.69. grams. Now it is clean and dry. I clean and dried it already. Uh, it's been sitting, so it's ready to be used. If you use it wet, it's dirty. <clears throat> the mass is going to be off in the long run. Okay. So we're going to put that off to the side. Uh, step two, add two grams of NaHCO3, which is your baking soda, to the evaporating dish and record the total mass in the data table. So what I'm going to do first is, <clears throat> I'm just going to make it easy on myself here. I'm going to weigh out two grams exactly of baking soda. It's very fine. <clears throat> two grams. Okay, 2.02, which is pretty good. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this back on the balance, and two grams of baking soda in, put the watch glass back on, and I got 126. Point six nine grams. Okay, <clears throat> exactly two grams. Okay, what I did to find the two grams was put an empty clean and dry weigh boat on, hit tear, put two grams on. Made exactly two point zero zero. Then I took the weigh boat off. I hit zero. Put my Evaporating dish and <clears throat> watch glass back on. And then I put the two grams in there, put the watch glass back on. I took the total mass right there, 126.69. Okay, so using the balance can be a little tricky, okay, but I want to make sure I add that weighing step in there for you for the future. Now, <clears throat> uh, step three is cover the evaporating dish with the watch glass so that only the spout of the evaporating dish is exposed. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this under a tray like so to protect the table <clears throat> from any acid spills, if there's any. Uh, <clears throat> step four, measure 20 mLs of three molar hydrochloric acid and transfer into a suitable 150 mL beaker. So I have the beaker right here, and I'm going to transfer the pre-measured 20 mLs of HCl, like so. And then I'm going to take this acid, which is very strong, and add it to the mix. And it's going to begin to foam and fizz, similar to, similar to the vinegar and baking soda volcano. Okay, the watch glass 
is preventing any liquid <clears throat> from shooting out. We don't want to lose any mass. We want to make sure all the mass is contained. Okay, so I'm going to keep adding acid until all the bubbling subsides. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to add a little excess acid. Good, good, good. So I don't need to add any more. The reaction is complete. Okay, now, stick. Set up a ring stand with an iron ring, clay triangle, and Bunsen burner. So here's the Bunsen burner. Ring stand, iron ring. Goes on like so. Okay, what I want to do is spark up <clears throat> the Bunsen burner, make sure it works. Let the gas come out. Okay, it works. Now, um, the bottom of the flame, sorry, the top of the flame should be very close to the bottom of the iron ring, like that. <clears throat> now we're going to carefully put the clay triangle on. Okay, I'm going to shut it off. Now I'm going to take crucible tongs, pick up the evaporating dish and watch glass. Made that look easy. I use two hands because it's cold. Okay, taking it off, you want to use only one hand. You don't want to burn yourself. Now, <clears throat> we want to reignite the burner. Like so. A little bit of a draft in here. It's moving around. Okay, so we're going to let that heat up for a few minutes. Make sure the flame is at the level we want. Okay, you don't want it to boil over. So we're going to let it heat up. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to let it heat up until all of the moisture evaporates. I'm leaving the watch glass on there to prevent any solids from shooting out all over the lab table. So the lab table should be perfectly clean. If there's white specks all over the place, that's where your percent error goes up because there's substance all over the table. It's not gonna be in your final mass. <clears throat> okay. So we're gonna let this go for a while, let it heat up. It usually takes about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So, In the meantime, what you guys can do is the calculations on the bottom. You can, number one, find a theoretical mass of NaCl that would be produced if your experiment were perfect. Okay. Now, for that initial mass, what you want to do is, what you're going to start with is to subtract the mass from the data table number two minus number one. So you wanna get the exact mass, <clears throat> okay, from subtracting number two from number one from the data table, and that's your grams NaHCO3. You wanna use the stoichiometric uh, conversions to go from grams NaHCO3 to grams NaCl. When you calculate that, write that down, okay? And when we're finished with this lab, the mass of the salt that we get in the evaporating dish should match what you get for number one, okay? <clears throat> so I'm gonna stop the video right now. And we'll be back with another video for the last part.